Oh, because I'm not. You seem so glad I'm not. Well, I'm quiet. I can, I can hear myself on your computer. <laughs> it's. I guess it's because you're close to the microphone, but I can hardly hear anything. Little mumbles. But it could be that you're just mumbling. Uh, and I always have to turn up my like speaker to full when I'm on yours, but like other things. <laughs>
because of a because of a defect or what happened? Hmm. Not happy with how the first one came out. Oh, this one's the full thing. Go away, display capture. Um, hi, and welcome to some sort of talk show where I decided to go with the quick intro because... I don't know, it's been kind of a weird week and hectic and I just wanted to do something quick and simple. I am joined yet again, once again, to the person that it looks like I'm ignoring, but I'm actually looking dead into his face. Even! <laughs> Hi, Even. <laughs> Hello! There's the today's feature. Okay, we don't have to look at that yet, but because I've been failing for so long, I might as well just leave it up there. So, of course, today's, today's not feature, but like... Sure, whatever, I'll go with that. Is the Cyclops! <laughs> Where is my hands? There it is. Yay! Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> last week we did the Cockatrice, and I think we're kind of in a... We're kind of in a, in a valley of dead zone, on my end at least, because these creatures are... They're not really that common when you play the game, <laughs> at least for the written stories, and... If you have, I think 80% of DMs don't really think about putting these in because um, there's so many more interesting creatures to throw at your players. But um, the Cyclops, we, we, we move into the Cyclops and it's yet again just another one of those like, does it have any special features? It's big, it's strong, it has a lot of hit points. Cool. Um, there are some variants that I've seen in which people have added a basilisk-like feature to them. Um, mm. These are obviously homebrew type stuff, but like, you know, it's only got one eye. So it just kind of can only really target one person instead of like, your entire party is subject to the gaze of the basilisk. <laughs> um, I... When I when I was gonna start my um, my section, I looked at that and I was like, you know what? I don't I don't want to just do a fat man with one eye. <laughs> like that sounds not that interesting, and I feel like I'll spend way too much time on trying to get like muffin top going. That I'll not do anything with, or alternatively. And this is exactly what happened when I was thinking about it, too, is I switched mentally like this. was, Or alternatively, I'll spend way too much time on the face and just never get around to, like, the detail of the eye. Mm. Um, is there any other lore stuff before I jump into what I actually did with my project? Um... <laughs> D &D That's a hard edition. one, because, like... <laughs> Sorry. Um, D&D &D no, 5th I mean, Edition like, actually you know, includes like... the poor depth perception feature where the Cyclops has disadvantage on any attack roll against a target more than 30 feet away, which is a thing that I always think that, like, like monocular creatures should have, but it's really cool that they add it in a creature like the Cyclops. Why the Beholder doesn't have that? It's crazy. I don't know. <laughs> Boulder has tons of eyes, but uh, yes, yeah, that's true. I feel I like it's. I don't. Know. Lots of creatures should suffer from like multiple things, and like things that have even like binocular creatures don't actually ha always have binocular vision. Like they have a weird sort of other vision. Like rats can move their eyes separate of each other to look up and down so they can see where they're going, but also see big things coming like at them. Like that can't be all that good for being able to do stuff. Like, and tons <laughs> of other creatures just see like off to the side. So like they shouldn't really be able to focus on too many things close to them. Like, I don't know. Weird. Gross. I didn't think they could do that. That's new information to me. <laughs> yeah. It's disgusting. <clears throat> um, Shut up, phone. Um, okay. 
Yes. Um, beyond that, um, D&D 5th Edition leans in wholeheartedly with the Sheep Thief version of the Cyclops, which um, timeline-wise is the later depiction of the Cyclops. Um, they really lean into it by note by noting that it is non-religious. They are too dumb to think that there is anything higher than them. They are unsophisticated. They wield clubs and rocks. <laughs> um, they are unwise. In the first sentence, they say Cyclops aren't great thinkers or strategists. Which is kind <laughs> of weird if you think about it, because the... Um, the Odyssean, the Homer-esque Cyclops. Um, th that one was depicted as being quite stupid also, but I actually thought that by rolling a boulder in front of your cave to keep your sheep in, I thought that was actually quite smart for a creature that's supposed to be pretty dumb. Um, I mean, you know, it's obviously arguable, but... It didn't do anything smarter than that, but I thought that just that, that in and of itself was actually quite smart for how they leaned into how dumb it was later. I don't um, know. It's one of those things that you call a person dumb if they like, it's like, oh, your plan for like greater life is you're just going to have a pit that you put a rock in front of. That's how you're going to store food. You know, you could do it like no. Tools, he, let him, he let him out during the day, and then he heard him in at night. Yeah, but I mean, like, really, if you lived, like, even if you were out, if you if you were in a rural vi village and stuff, like nowadays, and even back then, and everyone else is doing, you know, proper farms and like, you know, <laughs> gates and things like that, and proper like like thinking irrigation, like all that is really technologically heavy stuff. And then you got like the one neighbor that has his. That keeps his sheep in, like, just, like, you know, I got a cave, and I'll put a rock in front of it. <laughs> Works good. Like, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a, one of those weird arguments always when they bring up creatures. That, like, they say, like, orcs are dumb. Uh, like, except, I was like, uh, the, probably it's like a, I don't know, if you're thinking cultural civil, civilization spectrum of, like, intelligence or stupid, uh, or, like, stupid, you're like, maybe we can make them smart. But, like, currently, right now. They're pretty dumb. Because if I put a human in the same status of like, wait, you don't, you guys don't make anything. You just steal it from other people. Like, <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> These are all true things. Um, and that actually reminded me of the, of the weird nature about how much of an asshole Odysseus kind of is. I mean, I don't remember how he got into the oh, situation yeah. he did, but um, because you brought up the fact that, um, a lot of the Cyclops were depicted as, like, just going in and just, like, taking what they want. The Cyclops that Odysseus had to eventually um, deal with, uh, it was, like, the only one that I remember being depicted as having a herd of sheep. Like, all the other Cyclops would just come out of their, like, little hobbit caves and just, like, throw rocks at boats and then go out there and collect from whatever they were, go off to the to the next town over and just take what they were. This was, like, the one Cyclops that was just like, I'm good, you guys. I got, I got Steve and Mary and George. Bob. Bob's getting kind of old. I think he's going to be dinner. <laughs> taking care of, or taking advantage of, like, the one that's trying to get his life together. <laughs> i know that's what i thought but then i like the while you kept talking i was like trying to like rack my brain to figure out how odysseus got into that situation and i think he was just picked up and like brought into the cave so it was just kind of like oh okay so i guess the cyclops is still a dick but i don't know i, I can't imagine it being that simple like did he have a treasure or something that odysseus wanted or <laughs> what was I don't I don't remember the the entirety of that story, but um all right. Enough stalling. So let me take away D D fifth edition's depiction of a Cyclops. So this is the full concept of big man, one eye, and he's very primal. 
Mine. Or is it mine? I think I go first. Show a thing. Nope, you're first. My bad. <laughs> okay. So, I, um, Actually did I did more than just claw. the Cyclops. I grabbed this cl Crawling Claw as well. And I was telling Tyler earlier that I did this twice. It's a, um... I don't know. I found myself with a little extra time this week, so I like I drew out a different design and recorded it, and I had it all prepared just like I usually would. Um, but like every all the perspective and anatomy was weird because I decided to use a different brush, and I wanted to go less sketching heavy, less line heavy, and just jump straight into like the blocking out values. And I know that's one way that some artists work, but it's also they're good at working out that way because that's just how they naturally like working. But also because they have a good, strong grasp of anatomy and probably have references and other stuff. And I was just kind of like freely doing it. So I did this one again, but I made it closer. So I made this kind of like, I don't know, uh, Cyclops necromancer that just really, really likes making crawling claws. <laughs> Man, not the cyclone, not the cyclone teens. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah. Dad, it's not just a phase. Except my hands. <laughs> They're a part of me. <laughs> I'm an artist. <laughs> like, it was funny because I did I didn't like because I did it so big, I didn't get that much of a chance to do that many different size hands or other ones. And since I wanted to just do it all in one layer because it Oh, it's a hood. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. I wanted it to look like a little bit of an edgeboard. Like, like I could have drawn the hair, but I feel like that would have been too much. So I was like, yeah, burlap hood thing. Yeah, like when it's just when it's just that it's like base, sort of like block out stage. I was just like, oh, that's totally emo hair. <laughs> he's gonna totally, he's gonna totally tell me that it's not just a phase, <laughs> just a. That I'm I'm too old. Yeah. <laughs> Every one of like, the hands have like different colored like nail polish, except they're all just very <laughs> like, Yes. <laughs> they have like too much of like the hot topic like bracelets on them. Can the can the crawling claws do finite um dexterity movement? Like can they also apply nail polish to other crawling claws? <laughs> I think so, but if you really think about, like, I mean, it takes some, a while, but one thing that I keep on misdoing, um, and you'll see when I eventually decide to add the hands in there, is that, like, I make the, like, the gravity fallacy that happens oftentimes in, um, uh, in, like, uh, Adam's family, where, like, the hand is, like, so far, like, the fingers are so far forward, and, like, the mass oh, yeah. of the hand and the wrist are so far back, so far back. and it, it really needs to be doing more of the crawling action but i like you always like like a you think like a spider like how you would like do a spider but you forget that your the rest of your arm is holding up your hand so it needs to be so much higher so it would be a, a little bit more awkward of like trying to rest its palm back prop itself up with two of those fingers and then do like finite detail with the other ones but i think it could i don't know enough practice why not yeah. Once upon a time, a long time ago, I tried to animate a crawling claw in Blender, and I ended up spending so much time trying to figure out where the thumb placement is. Because you could kind of, you could, you, that, that depiction of the, of the hand crawling, it could work if the, if the thumb were to act like a, like a high heel or like a, like a pogo stick kind of thing, you know, in the front fingers mm -hmm. could just like spider along but once you start trying to animate that motion a it's not as cinematically pleasing as you might think it would, as it looks and and b when you when you're working with frames and like traditional like 
anime and like just animating in general that is a nightmare to try to do because you're just like you have these four fingers that are like moving at a, at a semi-constant rate but in one direction and then you have a thumb that's kind of moving in a completely different direction on a different scale and you're just like oh my god i hate this already for the thumb to move like it gets into that thing of like oh man do i now have to move the rest of the hand crap so it's not fun but yeah i don't know i was happy with how this one turned out the other one that i did was like it was a weird perspective but like the the cyclops was on the ground wrestling with one big hand like i was thinking like maybe it's a hand of like an even bigger giant or uh or of like a dragon or something and then there was like a whole bunch of small crawling claws that had like taken him down and are pinning him down very like Gull Gulliver's travel style. Mm. I don't know. But I'm kind of happy with how like, happy this one is. It's weird. I'm it's mostly still... that like mouth, I guess. No hands, right? Yeah, I'm still sort of waiting for the, the, the plus crawling claw to cut. Oh, there we go. <laughs> But um, mm -hmm. what I was what I was thinking was that this could easily be a good um, D and D promo. So if you work in layers at all, um, just get rid of the crawling claw later. Put some dice in his hand, and then you can throw up a televised version of your <laughs> D and D games later, and have that be like the advertisement about like Thursday. Come and watch us be idiots in the world of. Faerun or Eberron, <laughs> wherever we decide to go. <laughs> so, like, it's funny on that conversation. Um, in Eberron, they have like a very set place of like where giants exist, but then they don't really have a set existence or like explanation of like Cyclops and stuff. And that's like true in most things. Like, I think there might have been some little tidbit that says like the cyclops were an offshoot clan group or something that went from like the the, the continent of the giants and went to this other continent but i don't know it is but in my game i did a i ran a thing because like the giant empire fell a long time ago and like i had these my players get to the like to a place that was like i don't know a cavernous prison more or less of like giants but what I did is I took the giants, the cyclops, the trolls, and uh, Fomorians, and I kind of just mashed them all together in a way. Uh, I had like different ones, and mostly just talked about how they were, um, that, like when you ran into a cyclops or a troll or something, that these there was like these weird inbred giants. They're just like they've been down here too long. <laughs> and like I even had one person like he wanted he did like a I don't know, a history check or something uh, on, on the Cyclops that they found or the Cyclops uh, quotation marks that they found. And like he was all, uh, when he looked at it and he rolled like a 20 something, it was like, yeah, 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 this does not look like the depictions of Cyclopses. This is something that happened to evolve into Cyclops, not an actual Cyclops. <laughs> like, so it was like so much more mangled and deformed and like, oh, it's just using one big eye, but I think I see a vestigial other eye down. Ew. Ew. <laughs> and I think that's a cool way to use Cyclopses. Uh, as well as like Fomorians or Trolls or something is sometimes just reskinning the creatures. Because like you kind of brought up that some people have like redone the Cyclops and they gave it like a, a gaze attack thing. But there already is another creature could that. The Fomorian has that. Like Kind of, but like, there's no reason that you couldn't. True. I had a spine shutter earlier um, at the beginning of your hand talk because when you 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 were adding the sort of mud splotches of hands around his hood, but you gave detail to mm. the one in his hand, and so my mind just kind of filled in the detail for the rest. And I had a the shutter came because it was just like. Ugh, with that size, like, 
but that size those are just like really like they're creepier kind of spiders because you know mm-hmm. the context behind what they are once you know what they are though for me my arachnophobia doesn't like kick in as much because i know that they don't really have the venom aspect or like the sticky aspect of it <laughs> but the shutters still happened because it was just like uh just so many of them and crawling all over the place yay <laughs> i'm glad that of like i wanted that feeling of like this is that guy that likes spiders and everyone's like it's just a phase he's just gonna grow out he's like no it's not a phase <laughs> like, oh. that far it's not a phase anymore <laughs> you can't go because... back to regular guy after you were the dude that just has spiders crawling around him he gets that doctorates in biology specifying in arachnids but oddly enough doesn't end up go- getting a job in with um <laughs> in sex in general he gets a job in like a coroner's office somewhere <laughs> it's just like what right but i kind of i don't know this was actually making me think less of cyclopses or i don't know in, an in between because like maybe intelligence is one of those things that is more of a cultural thing so like if there was more cultured ones then you can have a, like necromancer cyclopses that have like odds like uh, hobbies of specifically animating crawling claws but then it was making me think too that like we were talking about animated armor um when we were doing that one and we were talking about like uh, we i wish that there was a better item creation slash animated object like filled out section so that you could be like yeah i just animate the gauntlets they're super helpful whereas in the same way of like not necromancers like yeah i could make zombies but like they're just all over this place they clunk into things animate the hands give me all the hands i could fit a bunch of them in just like one uh, into one chest and then the zombie or ew i just have one zombie that walks around and all the hands just cling on to it and crawl around it like spiders <laughs> I no. hate it. Or or a skeleton or all the like it's like its own walking bird cage of like hands. Like this is a nightmare. I like it. We missed out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different drawing I should have done. <laughs> well, we haven't gotten to the S's yet, so <laughs> Yeah. Um <clears throat> when we we'll get to N, it'll just we'll just take a couple of episodes of just nasty. <laughs> Gross. The other thing that I wanted to point out is, um, well, not point out, but the other thing that came to my mind was um, that in talking about the Cyclops wanting to invest in, like, spiders and stuff like that, I could see the Crawling Hands being a surrogate just because they're a larger creature, whereas if you really wanted to get into spiders, you'd have to do, like, the giant, like, horse-sized spiders, and the Crawling Claws are just like, this is what the humans deal with. (laughs) This is about the same size. (laughs) It's the it'd be hilarious though meeting the one that does love spiders that has like the really big magnifying monocular thing and like the teeny tiny tweezers so that he can like eat his little spiders like that's the weird the rice painting version of weird obsessions for giants (laughs) rice painting oh god all right. So let's move on to sadder things. Um, this is my this is my journey through of the Cyclops in Blender. Then we start with the default cube. Um, I wanted to do more of a sort of visual homage to the Cyclops, like the, it's like not journey, but that's what i'm gonna stick with its journey through like storytelling in general so um to those people who don't really care that much um the cyclops actually started off as just three cyclops um they were the original sons of a titan somewhere and they were the ones who actually provided zeus with his thunderbolts um so i decided to do a little thing of a hammer um this act like when i sat down to do this this actually gave me a good excuse to do um to practice three things which was one um solid object modeling um two it was um wrapping 
So earlier I had problems putting bracers on things and um, other sort of equipment on creatures. And so this kind of gave me the excuse to practice um, fiddling around more intimately with the shrink wrap modifier, which is what I eventually end up doing right there, I think, is where the stream syncs up. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, just making it look more leather-like, because that was another thing that I kind of shied away from, was, like, um, if I were to do a wrapping of something like um, like uh, hand wraps or, like, a tennis racket or, like, a sword hilt, um, I kind of just leave it very basic <laughs> so that I don't have to do a lot of detail. But um, now I got a little practice into putting a little more padding on those handles uh the third thing which will come a little later is uh actual eye detail because in the in the past i just kind of surrogated the eye with like a gem or just like a basic smooth sphere <laughs> and this time i actually got to be like yeah this is this is an eyeball and it's gross and i hate it <laughs> Um, so I didn't want to spend too much time on the hammer itself here because it was just the hammer wasn't really that important to me it was mostly the wrap um, I had a little bit of issue with the, the the helix wrap design but I didn't hmm. like just the standard spiral because I was just like man any any smith worth his self-worth wouldn't just quickly put a wrap on there. He'd do the double helix. <laughs> I don't know. If you've been watching Forged in Fire, I I'm hate surprised. That and so... <laughs> <laughs> then yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, I mean... It it's, it's the whole thing about amateur things, and I'm sure there's tons of artists that, of that if they were watching our stuff, <laughs> would say the same thing of like, but why didn't you just do the stuff that you should have done? <laughs> like, <laughs> why are you being lazy? Because I didn't have the experience to do it before. So I had a, I actually ran into a weird... Um, it was a good problem to have, but it was a weird problem to kind of realize that I had which was I didn't know how to make leather look um that sort of like smoothed over worn like I use this every day sort of look like it it always looked very fresh and um like new leather <laughs> and I just couldn't figure I couldn't figure out the texturing like settings correctly and so I just was like you know I'm gonna move on to the next thing so the next phase of the Cyclops's um story arc is that they went from these um, respected smiths of the ultimate weapon in the god's arsenal to these dim-witted just brutes of sheep thieves thieves uh, I don't know how you English anymore um, <laughs> so you just kind of kind of I decided to just kind of blob out a basic sheep thing. And I know, I don't know what sheep ears look like, but I really like the design that um, PlayStation or the, who was the company? Um, but the, the Spyro developers went with, with their sheep, which was these long sort of droop ears. Mm -hmm. They have most of flop ears. But yeah, the world of difference between a dog flop and a a sheep flop. <laughs> yeah, because I <laughs> always because when I when I close my eyes and I try to think of okay, what do sheep look like in a field when they kind of like raise their heads up at like sheep dog bark, and I always imagine their ears, kind of like like donkey ears, like they're allowed to perk, but I was just like you know I'll I'll just go with flop ears and just leave it at that. Um, I had a lot of issues with the, with the sheep fluff. I went as far as to look up, um, 
how does one make an afro in Blender? I feel like you just insulted a lot of people. <laughs> well, because it's it's really hard to look up how to sheep. Like I, I googled how to sheep fluff in Blender, and yeah. that that yielded very little helpful results. So I was like, all right, let's go even. You know, let's go less specific. Yeah. No, I, I understand. We use a lot of <laughs> like I get like taking shortcuts, but it was just like, oh man, that was a jump. I've learned that you just gotta do the similarities. You know, you can't always Are just you Google. On top of the hammer? I'm sorry, what? Or is this exploration? Uh, are you gonna put the sheep on top of the hammer? Or is this just an exploration of like- That was the original idea. Um, hmm. I, I have the hammer just hidden right now, so it's still right where the sheep is, but um... Then the idea was to kind of put it in like a coat of arms looking kind of thing. So the sheep would be on one side and the hammer would kind of like arc over the other half. Mm. Um, I wanted to try to get, I wanted the legs to be very kind of llama like, but uh, I had a little too much fluff <laughs> and the program crashed on me, making me lose all of my progress because I got so invested in how to fluff that um, I didn't save <laughs> at any time. Um, that's why I need like a supervisor because I get so invested in like what I'm doing at the moment that I forget the basics of like quote unquote safety or like just backing up stuff and saving a lot. You need a big old sign or like a thing, <laughs> uh, like a post-it note just sitting on the screen. Like, man, that's in the way. Oh, right. Save. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just or you need just a really like... annoying ding every 20 minutes. So just bang. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. The save ding. I just need like a, a pendulum that slowly swings down and every, like every 40 minutes or 30 minutes just like crosses my screen and blocks my view. And I go, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess it's save time. Um, mm -hmm. so in, so I, I just, after that crash, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely not doing a full Cyclops. Um, but that allows me to pull up a couple tutorials, which I kind of draw inspiration from through this and follow through. Uh, one of them does a process that I've been interested in how it works, but never really had the project to kind of do it which was um, marking seams marking seams helps when you need to texture stuff and color other stuff and as you see it just kind of cuts it out into pieces on one side so that i can more easily paint sections um, it helps the program do a thing called uv unwrapping <clears throat> and it would have helped in a couple projects in the past, but uh, I never really invested my knowledge into what is the mark seam function and how does it work. So this is the first time where I was like, yes, I can, I can finally spend time and effort on doing detail. So let's go the full, the, the full 10 yards or however many, how does one football back in my day? Um, yeah, so this is this is an interesting thing that I eventually came around to, which was um, the coloring. I've also run into this issue with um, my thumb, my YouTube thumbnails in the recent in recent uh, uploads, in which I'll have a background and I'll have the title or something in the you know in the foreground. But the colors that I choose kind of let them blend into each other, even though when I'm selecting the colors, I think that they contrast well enough. But um, in this one, it's similar, but it's 
what, what I'm trying to do is actually the opposite. I want them to blend. <laughs> I want them to blend more. I don't want this hard contrast between dark green and like this highlighter green. <laughs> Yeah, that's tricky. <clears throat> that's where it's good a, a good idea to create your color swatches beforehand and together so that you can use those and always draw from those color swatches whenever you're choosing colors across an area. Yeah, I, I don't know if it went by super fat. It must have. But um, there was a point in which the I'm sure I recorded it where it let me choose um or it would let me save the current color that i had in a little small palette down below it must have only mm -hmm. been like two seconds worth of view time but um it did that but as you can see i swapped over to another tab and now all my colors are gone i didn't catch <laughs> on to that because i was so focused on trying to get this um the see-through sort of texture happening on but once i realized what's going on there like right there um, I realized that when I swapped over to the tab, I forgot that Blender doesn't automatically save the image process. Um, you technically just closed mm. out that work window and therefore lost all that progress. So I had to do the, the iris again. <laughs> and this time, um, cause the last time I did this, it was... I was kind of touching on a little, or I was kind of messing with the, with the thing, but I was just kind of accidentally doing it. And this time, um, I had that idea and I wanted to emphasize it more, which was even if I smear outward the gr the light green into the, into the dark green, um, if I go back into the dark green and I smear in the exact same direction back into the light green, it makes it more, like, faint. And it makes the light green like fainter and it gives it that more of a peak whereas before it was just kind of this like dull and there was more of the light green and so i was just like huh that's interesting that it wouldn't just reset <laughs> my 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 previous smear but i liked that accident <laughs> so now i get the nice glossy sheen And this is about as close as I can get it to wet and reflective. It's weird wondering like what the what what's been put onto it to reflect. It's strange in like programs and stuff. Like Imagining those sort of things of like, oh, it's picking up a reflection of a thing. I don't know, programmed something. <laughs> this particular HDRI is a um, park. <laughs> it's a 3D park. Um, I switch it around, I think, here because I'm just unhappy with how it's reflecting. Oh, nope. I'm done, because there's the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... I, 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 do a little, I do a little effort with the monkey, just because I lost the hammer and the sheep that I was originally going to throw in with the eye. But... Yeah, that's the basic... That's the basic doodad right there. So there's my, there's my monkey clops. <laughs> My 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 psi monkey. Psi monkey. Monklops. The monklops. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was actually really. The latter half was actually really fun for me to do. Um, I it 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 was. It's always such. It's always such a chore to get me to just start because. I don't I don't know where where I've developed this, but it's just like I I only have like a two minute window in which it's the hardest thing to to get me to do, which is just to start. But once I'm past that that wall and I'm I'm in it and I'm messing with shapes and vertices and textures and stuff, 
then I end up going and doing some extra stuff. Like, I didn't have to put, like, the more, like, red eye stuff and, like, the crazy, like, irritated veins mm-hmm. on the eyeball. I just went back and did it because I was just like, you know what? It would look better if I did all that stuff. Um, yeah, I wish I remember what that was. Let me, let me look that up for a second. The veins or the irritation? Oh, um... Oh, that mental like, uh, state? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. But it's just like uh, I will I will mentally be in a like I'll I'll be in a mental nightmare of just like self-loathing and like constant just like if you just get started then then you'll you'll be into it. You just got to you just got to trust you just got to trust the mental me. Just do it. And I'm just like, "No, I don't want I want to just sit here and stare at nothing. I'd rather stare at my keyboard than get started." And just like finally, when I just take that deep okay. breath and I just do it. <laughs> yeah. And so this is, uh, I found it. It was it's a Japanese term, uh, and it's like it's an idea as well as just like the term, like as most words are, and especially in like I think Jap- uh, Japan likes doing a lot of these of having like specified terms for certain things and like defined things. But uh, kaizen is to do the smallest amount necessary to to say that you've done something but what it means is kind of like little starts that if like really all you uh if you start out doing kaizen doing like a like if you're going to work out you know what i mean and you're uh, and all like the smallest amount you could do is do one push-up every day you know what i mean but by the time that you find that you get yourself on the floor and you do one push-up you have broken past the barrier of the procrastination and so then you're like I can do five and you'll do five. You know what I mean? Or like uh, in terms of art or other things, it's just like, if I can just do the one small thing uh, and then you've got that, then you get, you, you build up the, you've built up the momentum already of like, okay, I'll just keep on going. I'll add this. And this is more fun. And I don't know, but I've also seen like a lot of, uh, <coughs> what is like, um, discussions on how to be a more productive person of like it is a smart idea uh, as an artist and that's this is what i mostly look at it as it's like to create a workspace that's conducive for making art so all your art supplies out and ready with your project to, to do things um as opposed to putting it away because if you put it away then it takes you time and you're worried about you're frustrated about the time to get started but if you can just get started it makes that that like that little kaizen moment of what is the smallest amount that i can do the smallest amount is instead of take everything out it is the start making work and then you start making work quicker (laughs) as opposed to like if there's like the the smallest amount is i can take stuff out and put it on the table then you might have already hit your maximum of like oh i'm gonna quit now (laughs) <laughs> yeah right. um yeah I, I found that the most torturous pro the part of that process of just like that two minute span sometimes it's a little longer but i'm just gonna say two minutes of just like berating myself and just being like just get started man just get started no i don't want to get started is the the mental yelling also in the back of the auditorium that says you've done it before <laughs> <laughs> and it's just mm-hmm. like that's the most torturous one because it's just like god damn it that guy's that guy's right like i have done this before we've gone through this whole <laughs> process before and yeah here we are again i just don't want to take that first step forward like it's sad there's a lot of um there's a lot of meant like there's a lot of challenges in the blender community about not deleting that that default cube um mm. but Oftentimes, that's kind of what gets me started, is going in there just be like, delete. And it's like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm, I'm working in Blender now. All right, and that's good. Let's do this thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's weird. Um, which... It's funny. My <laughs> is um, when I don't want to, like, get started in this, it's, uh, it's Pinterest. <laughs> hmm. Is that if I can do Pinterest and if I can do research... Like by the time that I've done, like I've started to get fueled up on the research part of it, then I'm ready to draw. 
And I've already done too much of like, well, I've, I have all the resources here. My iPad's in my hand because I'm looking at Pinterest on my like iPad. Just open up the program and start drawing. Yeah, I have to eventually do what the, um, what's the title called? The Animator's Handbook? <laughs> Just this big, massive fucking... <laughs> 125 page um i eventually have to do what the first four pages suggest to you which is just to eliminate everything like you think you can put on like a soundtrack in the background and then work with that and it's like no i found that i don't have that mental capacity i have to have a dead silent room with maybe a reference off to the side like that's as much as i'll have on youtube is a reference or like a tutorial or something if i'm really out of my league um but that's about it otherwise everything is dead silent <laughs> and i'm just working there clack 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 um I found that I'm able to work on stream also, like it's it's kind of the same thing, but I feel bad because I don't have um I don't have music going to kind of like entertain anyone that kind of comes in and or if I do, it's muted for me so the stream can hear it but I can't and a song might come on that's either really boring, really repetitious or just people don't like it in general and I can't catch that to change the chant, you know, to change the song. So <laughs> so there's a lot of there's a lot of like nuances when you start adding other things to try to you know try to further share your work or try to have it be more entertaining in other aspects. But yeah, man, that that mental state is it's uh it's it's a it's a productivity killer. <laughs> uh, I hate it. I'm glad yeah. that I'm not the only one. <laughs> and that, I don't know. It's the one that everyone like struggles with struggles with so much that there's a Japanese term to deal with that idea <laughs> like you know to that credit though um there is a um there is a theory out there that says that it's um that f uh, features are easier to kind of um address and overcome like and adversities are easier to overcome if it has an actual like identification or if it has a title or a name you know so that there's yeah. been multiple diseases where people are just like, yeah, he's just dying. And then the minute that people were able to label it, then it was like, oh, okay, so here's these three things that we can do to combat that suddenly. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. so yeah, but yeah. also... And it's the, the same Japanese for art. Like, oh, <laughs> if your issue is like just getting started, that's an easy thing to overcome as opposed to I suck as an artist or <laughs> I don't have... Like the concept of like, I don't have time to do this is really silly because like when it, when you flip that of like, I have five minutes to do this. It's like, okay, I can, I can plan out my time as opposed to like the big, like, uh. Yeah. That's the other stressful thing that kind of adds to the auditorium of shouting is that concept of I have five minutes to do this. So then the next voice comes in. So why do you why do you spend two minutes of that five minutes yelling at yourself about just getting started? <laughs> and then the stress kind of builds up of like, oh my god, he's right. Now I've only got three <laughs> minutes to do this thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I wanted to say that um, the Japanese also tend to um, label a lot of stuff because of how they've sort of developed their workflow, like how they've evolved in their work habits. Um, they experience a lot of these things at a at a more common rate than a lot of, than a lot of the the rest of the working world. <laughs> at a certain time, so they sit there and they go, "Well, if I've been experienced this, I'm at least going to name it something." <laughs> um, whereas I'm sure a lot of other you know, there, it is exp obviously it's experienced in other parts of the world, but I'm apparently they don't experience it enough to actually like be irritated enough at it to like call it something. <laughs> Just be like, "This is fucking well." Actually, the German language has a lot of specific names for a lot of weird specific instances. So, uh, well, I mean, that's a roll it into procrastination and we are, we're done with it. Like, <laughs> Kaizen is like actually more of a positive thing. It's the action of doing the smallest amount. Uh, it's, it's whereas <laughs> we kind of look at it in the, uh, in the other of just like you're being lazy. Like, yeah, you're being lazy and pushing it off. Like, yeah, right. there, there, there. You go for the Japanese mentality. Let's, let's, let's name it the cure. Let's, 
instead of let's let's focus on the problem. Um, so beyond starting again, so wait, what were the reasons why you started again? You were you your original idea was you were gonna have the dude wrestling a, a crawling claw or wrestling multiple <laughs> crawling claws. <laughs> like, I don't know. Let me see. I can pull up what it what it looked like. Um. But it was mostly just the, the angle and the perspective that just didn't vibe with you, or yeah. And it, it was so we were mostly focusing on the cyclops. That was like the goal of this, uh, and I made it more about the the crawling claws in that one. Uh, but because of that, or in all that, it was like the hand itself was not good. So. I don't know. It was weird. Like, the, if the focal point was incorrect, uh, uh, or particularly it was like anatomically incorrect, um, <laughs> get it out of here. I, like, I was done. Um, but I also like um, on that idea of like workflows and other things. Uh, there we go. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> messed up the screen all crazy <laughs> but uh, of workflows like my girlfriend took a nap and so being a nice boyfriend i just went, went and sat next to her um while she took a nap and so that was an easy like well i'm here and i'm not sleepy so i'm just gonna draw so i did my drawing earlier in the week than i usually do and by the time she woke up i was about ready to like finish finish it but there's just a lot of like weird perspective issues. And in both of them, I tried to approach this with a different painting method um, or digital painting method with different brushes. And it was, it was too loose for me to like wrangle in. And I lost, lost control of like the structure of the entire design. I think it was good. I mean, the only thing that kind of like my eye is drawn to is like weird is how flat the cyclops gets on his left side but yeah other than that i i like i like the the giant crawling claw i think that's a really scary concept for a creation the fact that you can't the clerics can't even turn it away yeah no i was thinking that it was like i don't know i was having fun at the idea of like if you were the necromancer that specify uh, that like that specializes in crawling claws. Could you imagine freaking the fuck out every time you get into a combat? You're like, there's a giant. Dude, there's a giant. I'm like, yeah, I know you want to turn its hand into it. Like, we well, let's go kill that giant. Like, no, we're not killing it. Do you see the hands on that thing? Oh, look at how big the dragon's claws are. No, no, you we are not fighting a dragon right now. Like, but could you imagine we could ride on that hand? Like and then its claws could dig into the, like, like, I don't know. So it was fun. But there was just, like, if you look at the, and I did this in the other one, but, like, the the perspective on the twist on each of the fingers are kind of different. Like, the Cyclops, its head and shoulder is, like, more over on one side of its torso than the other. Like you said, it got flat on one side. The thumb is also... It's forward and twisted down, but like the where it connects is actually even further up on like the hand part. Like I don't know, there was just so many things that was just like I needed to start this better, and like really the only way that I could save it is scrapping it, redoing the anatomy, and then revaluing it or repainting it. Yeah, but, now that you point it out, it's, like, even more obvious. Like, before, my eyes were just looking at the one thing, but now it's like, okay, that shoulder is a lot larger than that shoulder. That thumb is kind of a little jank. <laughs> All right. I mean, there's some nice moments. Like, there's a trail of, like, blood nasties there. There's one hand that I love that's crawling to the back of, like, the head of the, uh, of the Cyclops. And the Cyclops' yeah. face and expression and eye with the shadow that's coming over it of the like impending like claw tap. Like I, I really enjoyed It's just, I knew I could do better and I had some time this morning. Um, I kind of wanted to flip the narrative um, and to see where I could go with that. And I haven't done close-ups in a while. Like I've done these like full body scenes 
So I thought it would be kind of nice instead of a wide angle choosing like a, a detail shot. If you kill the, if you kill yeah. the share, Let's then see. I can go back to the original. There we go. All right. Yeah, and so this is what he went with in the end. Which I think now that you've initially I was just like they're, they're both pretty good but now that you've put it in perspective it's like yeah I appreciate this one a lot a little more <laughs> just a little more better bones that's all it is like uh, that word like concept art solid in both of them but it, it's like it's one of those things that are just like I don't know <laughs> When somebody puts like a nice, like puts on like a good clothes on, like yeah, good clothes on either thing, but one of those people worked out and the other one did not. <laughs> and you should, I could actually see that one being in like a like an um, unearthed arcana or something about like more intelligent cyclop cyclopes. <laughs> yeah, good. Mm. Um, yeah. An artist that I've been looking at um, when I when we were doing this, and I didn't exactly want to like steal their style or stuff, um, but I have a Pinterest board full of like every single D and D creature, so I have a bunch of options to choose from <laughs> a picture. Um, but Miguel uh, Regodon, they do some pretty cool designs, and they have these like very much more cultured looking cyclopses, and I like they I. I, I would really love, I can't wait, I don't know, I, I guess I should look into what they were illustrating for. Um, but I would love to run into that, like, that area in a fantasy world where you're, like, actually, like, coming up with a Cyclops culture. And interesting conversation instead of, like, hmm, you sit with the sheep, be good till I eat. <laughs> like, <laughs> and wondering, if they're so big... Why did and like they can just push everything around? Why do they bother putting on that loincloth thing? Where did they get enough stuff to just make that loincloth <laughs> thing? Who tans leather that big so that they could do it? Do they just tan enough leather just to cover that? Like it's so many, so many confusion things <laughs> to me. It's not tanned. It's just rotting cow hide. <laughs> <laughs> like not that i'm super happy about being like fantasy dicks but i think i think that'd be that'd be the weird one of those weird things of like fantasy worlds that you don't really think much about of just like uh so many things are naked i would i would imagine that if i was that large i too would try to wear some sort of like genital coverings just because like pine trees would be really annoying to like have hit me all all the time so just having some sort of like mud flap to just kind of help not <laughs> yeah the thwap protection and i guess if everything's smaller but i mean the first place it would be trying to attack it's like just throwing it right up there mm. Beyond having a crash on my end, um, my largest struggle was trying to get the transparency correct on the, what's it called? The cellar, 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 that, whatever that thing is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because Blender's render program has, always has kind of this like little pixelation thing just to kind of reload some of the assets going on. If I were to actually like render the image, um, it would be much cleaner. However, mm. I'm also really bad at the one other thing that I need to practice maybe in the, like, the next um, pro uh, project is um, setting up my lighting sources so that the subject is like more adequately illuminated. Because uh, right now, and what's down there is it's being illuminated by the HDRI, by the war, by the world in general. Like the little lamps that I have floating around are doing nothing. <laughs> um, but I, I, I would love to put 
more finished like the the end photo that it eventually freezes on i would love to have that be like an actually rendered image but i need to practice my lighting placement first because when mm. i did that the last time um the 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 glass finish of the of the eye kind of disappeared entirely i was just like oh man and i put so much work into that and now it's just invisible that sucks <laughs> um so at least and i was with... a little older right? yeah it... i was on... yeah the beholder was also a disappointment <laughs> in my eyes <laughs> um so yeah i but i was really happy with um being able to practice a lot of those other things like messing around with um further messing around with the um adhering of like the handle wraps even though i lost all that imagery and i did get I did get more of a more of a more of a curl fluff instead of the couche fluff, <laughs> the just the straight sort of fluff it was around. Good. Yeah. And I mean, the eye came out better than I thought it would, but that's you know the kind of result of what you get when you follow two tutorials and just sort of Frankenstein them together. Yeah, that was indeed the Cyclops for this week. Um, next week. Not doing that yeah, what is next week? week? Next week we move into the D's. Apparently. Oh man. Oh man, the D's are so. That's so many. Okay, so I guess these are these are. We it doesn't necessarily have to start there because I think the first one, if we were going to the D's, is the Dark Mantle, right? Which we already did something like that, but whatever. It's just the squid version of a... It's just another aquatic thing in a dark cave. <laughs> yeah. Not aquatic anymore. <laughs> well. But yeah. I guess we have some big questions on, like, how do we want to start doing demons, devils, and dragons? Uh, yeah. Dinosaurs? I don't know. We kind of did dinosaurs, but... Those ones are all yeah. categories. <laughs> oh, shit. That is and a the that we're going to have to figure out. These are these are true things. Um, the Allosaurus snuck in there because I wasn't going off of the alphabetical listing in on the Monster Manual. I was going off of the index version mm -hmm. of the listing. So that's how that snuck in there. Um, theoretically, we should have never done the Allosaur until we got here now. <laughs> but... Um, so fiends are the only ones that are just like scattered all over the monster manual. Is that how that works? Yeah. Well, fiends then... is a is a category, much like uh, um, like giant or I guess humanoid fiends are, are uh, scattered. Because but... I thought I thought the keyword demon was also the same thing where that was a category in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So like fiend is the parent category, uh, and then under that is then de uh, and it separates into like demons or devils, but then there's a couple of miscellaneous ones. And then demons and devils as being from specific realms also subcategorize into things. God Same by like Yugoloth. Yugoloths are like their own subcategory of fiend that then have their own subcategories of different lawfuls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yugles. <laughs> You. <laughs> <laughs> um much fun with that <laughs> dumb names. But yeah, Dark know. Mantle. Yeah, I don't know how to do those larger ones. Um I think depending on our interest in those categories, we can either just choose our favorite one of that category or we could try to do all of them. Um, it, originally, I was going to say that I wanted to do all the dragons, but um, they all have basically the same sort of body shape. So I guess we could just choose our favorite dragon and then do that and just have it be done with. Mm -hmm. And then we can do the same thing. And with you know, I mean, demons and devils. Uh, yeah, a thing that maybe, maybe, uh, like, we could think of is we could think of like strength 
tears or like those things or where we could do like you know uh like a demon and the devil like we could do a lesser demon a greater demon and then like a demon prince same about like devils you could do lesser devil greater devil and then like devil lord or whatever they call themselves yeah (laughs) Yeah. and then like i think dragons we could like couple in dragonborns but we could do a dragonborn a chromatic dragon and then like a metallic dragon yeah 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 yeah, yeah. we could do that dragons are somewhere in there maybe i don't know Lots of yeah, weird they things. yeah they all seem to have some sort of categorization like that. Except for demons are a little more ambiguous, but they do have like the under the demon underling pool, and then there's like the demon lords, um, which that's going to be a little more abstract because I don't think there's an actual photo of the demon lords. <laughs> uh, oh, there's never, tons. Well, I mean, I've never seen like. <laughs> I've never seen a Wizards of the Coast published thing of like the the Lady of Pain or something, you know? Because um, isn't she supposed to be like wind? <laughs> um, but you know what? We can definitely find them, and uh, we can read descriptions and then draw them slash make them for you. That's yeah. part of what this is, right? And the devil, yeah, and the devils have a have a more stricter hierarchy of lesser, greater, and arch devils, and the like you said, the dragons have chromatic, uh, metallic, so on and so forth. Then there's a shadow dragon, mm-hmm. which for some reason that gets its own category for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. All right, so that sounds like a plan. So next week, we get the D. <laughs> um. <laughs> dark mantle <laughs> alright thank you for tuning in <laughs> and I hope you tune in next week for another s- some sort of talk show um, I have been Tyler this is Ethan and uh, yeah if you are just tuning in miss this episode or want to see past episodes well I guess this will be the first one that I post up on YouTube um, I post the full thing on YouTube. Uh, link down below. I might actually do it on my other channel. I don't know. I'll I'll think about that later. But next week, bye. <laughs>